All right, welcome to Wednesday night at Living Word Family Church. This is These Final Days Ministries. I'm Pastor Ryan Speakman, serving under my favorite pastor in the whole world, Pastor Maureen Collins. <laughs> so much. Um, and uh, tonight is a little bit unusual because we're not going to be meeting next week. We're going to have twice as much fun tonight. All right. Did you hear that, Cheryl? We're not just having fun tonight, we're having twice as much fun. That's right. To make up we for next week. Do. Well, to make up for next week, yes. And yeah, we do have a lot of uh, lot of fun ground to cover. I've got I have so much content. I'm really having a good time with this part of our study. And does anyone recall where we are in our study? Like what 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 did we start to talk about last week? Uh, we were on chapter Revelation 12. chapter twelve, verse That's a drop. verse six. six. Verse six. six. Gold star for Cheryl. Um, and verse 6 is specifically about, about what? Governance of abomination. Well, it's related for sure. It's, it's the woman in the wilderness. The woman so. in that. And then the woman yes. says, well, and then how is Jesus? Exactly. Very good. Very good. So um, before we get to that, though, and, and what's one of my sayings in here, which I haven't used in a while? Uh, no news is good news. Good news. Because that means we can dive right into our study. I'm going to keep this really brief, but I have two short videos that, that I very much want to share with you because these are uh, extremely pertinent to our study. So, so like Cheryl just said, this all relates uh, to, to what we call the abomination of desolation. That's when the Antichrist takes over the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. That's halfway through the seven-year Great Tribulation. Uh, this is all uh, precluded by the signing of a peace treaty, right? A seven-year peace treaty, which we read about in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. And and we spent, you know, I think it had to be several months knowing me, uh, talking about the nature of the treaty and who actually brokers the treaty. It's kind of a different way of looking at it than, than I've been taught my whole life and it, than I believe my whole life and have taught myself, that the, that the guy who brokers this peace treaty is not, in fact, the Antichrist. And I think that we've proven this pretty conclusively with God's words. Pretty clear. I mean, yep. in, in the book of Daniel, just a few verses after the treaty is brokered, we read about how the Antichrist uh, sweeps away God's people and the Prince of the Covenant, the guy who broke the treaty. So clearly they're not the same person. The Prince of the Covenant is, is an agent of, of what nation? Is it Israel? Is it the nation of the Antichrist? Tom, go ahead. Us. Us, us, the U.S., the United States of America, exactly, because we are the last days, what? Edge mm -hmm. You guys are so good. Boy, if this was college, you guys would all be, like, getting your bachelor's degrees by now, at least, maybe master's. Very good, very, very good. So, um, so, so uh, if it's the United States, an agent of the United States that brokers this treaty, and this all sounds so speculative, but my gosh, just, you can't make up... You cannot make up this story. I mean, there's so many things coming to pass, mm -hmm. so many details that are falling into place right before our eyes. It, it's so clear that we're in the last of the last days. And, and so even though it might sound like kind of kind of hype, like really, yeah, I, I believe that, um, that one person in particular is an extremely good candidate for the, to be the Prince of the Covenant. Prince means what? What's a prince? What's, what's a prince in, in a kingdom? It's, it's the son of the king, uh, or it, the United States, we don't call it a king, we call him a president, president right. and maybe a son or son-in-law, son which in biblical terms would be considered a son, right? Yeah. So, so you guys all see where I'm going with this. So this is, this is a uh, video that the uh, White House released, I don't know when, my, my brother-in-law, coincidentally, just sent this to me this morning, I, I hadn't seen this yet, and this is a little promo for um, a conference that has been taking place over the last two days, it just concluded today, I believe, in Bahrain, which is a little tiny, you know, country in the in the Gulf, in the Middle East, right? And uh, uh, what is this conference? Do you guys know about the conference? And what's the what's the purpose of the conference? What why why is has the White House promoted this conference? What what have they been discussing in Bahrain for the last two days? Iran. 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 Oh, I'm so glad I get to surprise you guys. Uh, I mean, you won't be surprised. Um, Iran definitely came up, I guarantee it, in the, in the course of this conference, because the, the issue with Iran is what's pulling this thing together like glue. It's, it's what's, gosh, ah. again, you just, you can't make this stuff up. It's amazing to watch this unfold. Pressure. So because, because of the, 
the, the crisis with Iran. Yeah. So we know that Iran is, is a Shia, Shiite Muslim, Shia, right? Uh, most of the rest of the Middle East is what kind of Muslim? Sunni. Sunni Muslim. <laughs> and, and they're very much at odds. They don't get very along. Much. Okay. Uh, they, they've been enemies ever since uh, the Prophet, Prophet, sorry, Muhammad, that guy Muhammad, don't put a thought on him, and there's probably already <laughs> on there, um, uh, passed away because that's when this whole feud started, the separation, because yep. the Shia believed and believed at the time when Muhammad passed away that, that uh, the next in line, the next uh, leader of, of the Muslim people and the Mahdi, ultimately, which is the Muslim Messiah, see how this yes. is all, just all ties in just directly to the end time story, right? Um, has to be a direct, the Shia believe this, has, he has to be a direct descendant of, of Muhammad, okay? Uh, so that would have been, and I'm already forgetting the names, um, that would have been his, uh, his cousin, someone help me, Andrew, do you remember? Abu, I don't remember, I forget the names for now. Um, yeah, it, ha it has to be directly in his bloodline. Are you sure it's the Shia that believe that? Positive. I think it's the Sunni that believe that, and the Shia believe that it should be the next. No, that, that detail I got ruler. right, I just, I should have written the names down. I was trying to commit to memory today. And I've studied this for years, okay. and I always forget the guy's names. But, um, but the Sunni argued, no, he doesn't have to be a direct descendant. And, gotcha. and who they wanted to replace Muhammad as the leader over Islam at the time. Uh, was Muhammad's closest uh, friend and advisor, Abu something. Apologies, I'll have to look it up or look it up. You know, if Elijah wasn't busy, he'd be looking up on his phone right now. Anyways, this is what the division is based on. And it ultimately points to the end time story. It's who is the Mahdi? What is the nature of the Mahdi? Is he direct descendant of the Prophet Muhammad, like the Shia believe? Or is he just a trusted advisor, someone who the, the Muslims have kind of democratically, in a way, elected in a way to be their, their leader. This is the separation. But because of this, here we are set many centuries later, okay, over, I mean, well over a thousand years later, was it 13, 1400 years later, uh, and they're still fighting this fight, which plays perfectly in the, into the end time story, as we're gonna see more and more even in the course of this study that we're doing about the woman in the wilderness and all that, right? We'll see it. Um, but, but who was it that was meeting at the, this Bakri conference over the last couple of days? It's all the Sunnis, yeah. okay, not all of them, but you know, uh, all, the, all the nations who were represented, there are Sunni Muslims, mm -hmm. and they are very concerned about Iran. Iran has hegemonic aspirations, at least to be the regional hegemon for now, probably global eventually is what they love, of course. But, um, uh, you know, they're, and, they're, and the nuclear deal now has completely fallen apart, Trump canceled it. Uh, our guys, it's kind of funny, I mean, you know, but our guys like John Bolton was on TV, I think yesterday or day before, um, demanding that Iran, you know, stick to their agreement on the nuclear deal that we canceled, so it's all kind of ironic. But um, Iran's going after nukes again, the Middle East is terrified, so suddenly they're on board for this idea that they never would have been on board for just a few yeah. years ago, and that is Israeli-Palestinian peace brokered by the United States, okay? So here's a little promo piece, that's what this conference is about, is the deal of the century that we've been talking about, right? Which, by the way, um, I predicted, and it wasn't me, it's articles I read online, that they would release the text of it, uh, and they have actually released the text of, of this portion of it, the economic portion, but the whole deal will be officially unveiled now, maybe until November. So hold your horses, be patient, you know. Like I said, Jesus can't come back until I get my book series done, so it's all good. <laughs> but here's a promo video that they put out. Oh, go ahead, Andrew. They, 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 uh, uh, they believe the, the, the Sunnis, they believe that Muhammad's followers chose Abu Bakr. Right, his closest close advisor. Friend, advisor. Right. You're absolutely right, I had him reverse. The Sunnis believe it, said, because he had no right. rightful heir, that the Khilafah or Caliph should be um, elected. Whereas yeah. the Shia believe that it should be following the line somewhere. A blood relative. The blood, right. A blood yeah. relative. Yeah. Because yeah. they actually believe that um, when the Mahdi comes, he will be, um, he will have Muhammad's spirit in him. Right. And that he will basically, in a sense, be Muhammad reincarnated. Right. In, the, you know, the Shia say he's the 12th uh, Imam. Yes, he's about yes. The well, blah, blah, blah. And, yes. um, but that explains you know, why you're seeing like uh, ISIS and other factions in the Sunni world declaring a caliph. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. You won't see the Shia right. doing that. Exactly. So that's and, interesting. And, and, I didn't and know that. We might wonder, well, how does all this? What does all this have to do with today? Why are they still fighting over this? What's what might seem at first glance a minor point, wow. but again, because it all has to do with the Mahdi, the Muslim Messiah, yeah. who eventually is going to appear as who do we know him as? That's the Antichrist. Yeah, yeah exactly. See? So go ahead, Elijah, real quick. I'd like to point out that that would be ridiculous to wonder, considering how many denominations of Christianity there are and how like many long-running like splits. Well, that's ridiculous too. Makes a lot of sense. I think. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah, yeah of course. But I mean, like, if we do it, why wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in their case, you know, we might think, well, that was so many centuries yeah. ago, you know, it's a, it's a dead yeah, issue, but it's not because it's all about the future, right? It's all about the Muslim Messiah. So, so here's a, a promo video that the White House put out for this conference. So you ready for this? This is, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Enjoy this. Let me know if I need to turn the volume. I think this is all just like Instagram. Been to a few of those places, like Ramallah, Jiffin. Yeah. It's a very cool video. Look at this. It might be something. That's outside of Jerusalem right there. That's Gaza. Look at that. Look how pretty Gaza could look. And it's true. This actually would work if they pulled it off. And, and be thinking in terms of the Daniel 927 3D as you're watching this. Just send shivers up my spine to trip. frogs in a pot of boiling water like we see this it's like ah eh, whatever or do you guys get the amazing prophetic impact yeah. of this i mean two thousand wow. years since since the last of the, the biblical prophecies were written about about this the book of revelation uh three thousand years almost since some of the other ones were um and we're seeing it right before our eyes this, yeah. this fancy Crazy. you know glittery video and and this is for real. This is this is what the hegemon is pushing for in the world and trying to get uh, Sunni Muslims, the Muslim world, the Sunni Muslim world, uh, in on this, together on this, right? Um, to to bring this peace treaty. Now, what what is the what is the the focal point of this treaty from our standpoint? We understand spiritually why this is so significant. What what is the the epicenter of the end time story geographically? Jerusalem. The Temple Mount, of course. Mount. Kim, right? Gold Star for that anyways, yeah. Jerusalem more broadly, but the Temple Mount in particular. And and keep that in mind as we see things like this. This is this is what it's all coming down to. And the whole world has to get on board for this. Listen, um, the whole idea, as grand as it is, of course it's off to a really rough start. A uh, lot of critics, people saying, you know, that this, you know, this isn't gonna work, you know, nice try. You know, I'll just say it. This is President Trump we're talking about. This is President Trump. This guy gets stuff done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, maybe the Prince of the Kevin, <coughs> could be the Prince of the Kevin. Extremely, extraordinarily talented guy. Yes. Okay. Uh, young guy, but but he he is gifted, and it might be for such a time as this. Okay. He's he. If you look at him and watch him and listen to him speak, he's unusually gifted. It's it's strange to me. I'm not trying to hype it up. Maybe I am. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm being overly dramatic. To me, there's something about this guy. He's unusually gifted. He may not be the guy, but but here's what's exciting about this moment in time, me standing up here, you guys in the class. He might be the guy. That's what's exciting right now. Go ahead. Something just dawned on me too, Ryan. You know, for 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 Jared Kushner's part, it the whole idea of of getting them together and creating this treaty doesn't necessarily have to be malintent on his part. No, oh, it's it's one hundred percent. You know what I mean? He, he's wanting to bring peace. Yeah. He's trying. He's looking at it from a positive, a yeah. more secular, you know, 
conserve, you know, preserve Israel and bring peace around them and bring prosperity to everybody kind of guy, right? You know, he wants you know, the world to be, you know. Right. You know, you know, um, this is this is why I, I love this topic so much for for me. Um, I I, I don't look at it black and white. It's, it's no, that's, it that's too easy. Yeah. You know, we, we read, you know, the, this, you know, this prince comes along and he, uh, you know, forms this treaty. We know that out of this, the Antichrist comes to power, ultimately takes over the temple, starts killing Jews and Christians. So, so the black and white view, the overly simplistic view is, oh, well, it must be a bad guy, the guy that does a treaty. It's not. It's 100% good intentions. Yeah. Jared Kushner's heart's in the right place. But it doesn't matter if, if he has a destiny in, in, in this world, if he has a part to play in the story of human history, God's story, then it's going to come to pass. Then he's the guy. Um, does that mean that he's going to be judged for it? Listen, way above my pay grade, it's got nothing to do with it. If, he, if he's, he's Jewish, so right now he doesn't acknowledge Christ as the Messiah, but Paul says in Romans chapter 11, in the end, all Jews will be saved. Yeah, I mean, I'll, exactly. I'll, you know, I, I shouldn't say it. No, the Holy Spirit's mm -hmm. coming out to say, say it. it. No, the Holy Spirit just told me not to say it. Okay. Um, let me just say, I, I personally really like President Trump. I really like Ivanka Trump. I really like Jared Kushner. I like them as people. Um, I look at them and I think, these guys just might be fulfilling biblical prophecy. Yeah. Uh, it, is there going to be some extraordinary darkness along the way that comes out of this? Yeah, but anyways. As complex as that sounds, like I say, I just I don't look at things black and white. It's not. Go ahead. You know, it, it, it also says in Daniel that um, concerning the Antichrist, that they would not give him. He's a, he's a vile man that whom they would not give the kingdom to. They would right. not give the title of royalty. Right, right. right. Um, and what's really interesting, though, it, 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 in some translations, it'll say not the title of royalty, but it, it, in, in some of the older translations, um, Young's Literal and a few others, it says they would not give him the kingdom. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of Which wonder if the they're talking about, like, they wouldn't let him necessarily have any kind of, of a powerful, powerful position when it comes to Israel. Not over Israel per se, but, you know, and, yeah, and he, he it says, but he, 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 gets, he gains it through a secret plan. Yeah, intrigue. So, so could it be, I mean, I'm just postulating here, but could it be that he's watching this whole thing unfold with the peace treaty? He's like, oh, there's my inroad. I'm going to come in on the coattails of this. Oh, of course. And then and I'm going to move right in and take over. And, and is this the actual treaty? I mean, gosh, it could be. I mean, it's, could it's be. not... It's not done yet. It's not completed yet. So we, we might wonder, you know, how many people are actually on board for this? How's it going? This is interesting. Not at all surprisingly, completely expected. The Palestinians have 100% boycotted this. They said there will be no talking. We're never going to talk to, to the Trump White House. Not ever, okay? Uh, this isn't surprising. Their main uh, uh, reason for this that they give, their main motive is uh, Trump's declaration of Jerusalem or um, recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Right. At one point, they're saying, but you know, if that hadn't happened, they'd still be boycotting this, okay? And this is interesting, though. Do you know what the Trump White House did? And, and there's a strategy here that there's this an interesting that tactic. They, they didn't invite the Israelis to this conference, okay? I think that's smart. At first glance, I was like, what? What are they thinking? But, but they, they want to first get their foot in the door with the, yeah. with the Muslim Middle East. And say, look, let's all work together. But, but see how the world now is is coming together to kind of dictate to the Israelis and Palestinians. I say dictate loosely, but we're going to come up with this plan, and then let's just see where it goes. Meantime, I, I want to show you one more quick video that the White House uh, posted. I think this was today, it might have been yesterday. Could I ask? And so you can see the actual conference. Go ahead. I want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. So now this was posted where? In Bahrain, which is a small um, Middle Eastern country, it's in the Gulf. And this Persian was Bahrain. put there. Now, all this that they actually advertise, and all this money of everything that it's going to cost. What I'm wondering is that all going to come out of that area, or um, is it going to be where the oh, United yeah, States is going to support part of that? That is a fantastic question. It's I'm it's extremely saying. pertinent. Uh, President Trump has has committed at least a billion dollars toward this, maybe more, but the, the current price tag is $50 billion. But here, here's one key aspect of this, this uh, treaty that they're talking about, right, that's, that's so fascinating and so compelling. 
no one's asking anyone for donations. They're not asking people to give charity to, for this cause. This whole thing is set up like you'd never get from a politician, but you sure as heck would get from businessmen oh, and yeah. real estate tycoons. Yeah. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about President right. Trump and his son-in-law, yeah. Jared Kushner. That's what these guys, these guys aren't politicians. They don't understand politics. They don't know diplomacy. They're kind of learning. But their, their whole shtick is business and investment and money. That's why they, they, that promo video was showing like, you know, Ramallah and Gaza yeah. and everything's yeah. blooming and there's new, you know, uh, buildings going up and, and prosperity coming in. Um, listen, can I tell you something? Can I give you a little secret? That's what's appealing to humans. And I don't care what nation you're in. I don't care what century you're in. I don't care what color your skin is, what religion you are. If you want to appeal to every human universally, it's... It's money, yeah. okay? Oh, yes. It's human nature, right? So, so how did the conference look? How did the conference look? Were there were there many in attendance and all this? Uh, watch this one. This one's cool. You want to see the actual conference? Just a little glimpse of it. Here we go. I like this one. The Palestinian people have been trapped in an inefficient framework of the past. The priest to prosperity vision is a modern framework for a brighter and more prosperous future. It is a vision of what is possible with peace. The people in this room are not people who shy away from hard problems, and everyone here would like to see us bring an end to this Israeli-Palestinian conflict. There's a serious interest, appetite, and willingness Look at that. by the global community to help the Palestinian people if the right context can be created. The goal of this workshop is to begin thinking about these challenges in a new way. Let's try to view this conflict and the potential of the entire region through a different lens and work together to develop a concrete plan to try to achieve it. We can turn this region from a victim of past conflicts into a model for commerce and advancement throughout the world. Should we find these to stay the status quo, a brilliant system that favors few at the expense of many? Or should we push together to find new solutions and fight for a brighter future filled with opportunity and hope? See all the interest there? Do you see that? I, I don't know how many countries are represented. I'm still trying to get the details of the conference. I know that, and they're calling it a workshop, not even a conference. Um, it's just to get them thinking. It's planting seeds. And um, I know that uh, Lebanon boycotted it. Uh, and like I said, the Palestinians boycotted it. Uh, do you know that in that audience you just saw, there were several prominent Palestinian businessmen. Yes. So some, some of the Palestinians actually went. They weren't representatives of the government. They're businessmen. But, um, but this is what drives politics. I, this is new information for you guys to know, but money drives politics. Yeah, sure. Selah, I'm making yes, a joke. I'm being really? facetious. We know this right yeah. So So let's see, let's see what happens with that. the workshop held? What's that? Where was this workshop or conference? Uh, Bahrain, which ba is a li ba little area in the country. Bahrain, Yemen. Bahrain. We say Bahrain, and he does it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Elijah's always asking me about my proper pronunciation. Ba ba Bahrain is yeah. that what it's called? Yeah. B a h. Friends of ours, their son was stationed over there. A i n. Yeah. Okay. So. Bahrain. I have a question, Ryan. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Of all of this. Yes. It's been crickets. How is Netanyahu doing with his revote in September coming up? Last I heard, as of today, in fact, I, I read it on Haaretz, one of the Israeli news outlets, that um, Netanyahu was talking about canceling the elections, which I have no idea what that means, but I guarantee it's going to really upset the left. That means yeah. status quo stays <laughs> yeah. the same. Net Netanyahu is, is basically uh, an Israeli Trump. I know that. That's yeah, you guys know that. Him. He's another. He's another um, hawk yeah. politically. You know, we want to use that, that word. So, um, love that guy too. Uh, amazing guys. I don't know. I just like people who get things done. You know. He's always been that so, way. Yeah. Always. He's and uh, he, he's another one. You know, like him, don't like him. Any way you cut it, he he is playing his part in God's story. He's he's fulfilling a destiny that God put on his life. Before the foundations of the earth, just like just like our president. So, um, and again, does it sound like I'm being overly dramatic? It, it just is what it is. I think you guys are on the same page. Okay, so um, we left off here last time. We're talking about the woman in the wilderness, right? Actually, here we'll go ahead and um, just very briefly glance at the verse again. Why not, right? So, uh, again, we are in Revelation chapter 12. Um, we're having fun with this one. I'm having fun with this one. I hope you guys are too. And I'm more. Um, because uh, with this, we're, we're really able to, to an unusual degree, I think, 
bring the end time story to life, like really look at it, what is this really saying? Um, have you guys ever heard a, um, a pastor or preacher teach about uh, the, the um, Israelites wilderness journey, wilderness experience? Of course. Yeah. That's like a, a you know, we probably heard of the first time in preschool, right? The story of the Israelites, you know, the movie Prince of Egypt. Yeah. They get out of Egypt, they, they spend 40 years wandering the wilderness. That's not the only wilderness journey and wilderness experience that the, that, that the Jews are slated for. There's a, there's a second one, there's another one, and that's in, in the near future, and that's this, okay? So, so you've heard pastors and teachers and preachers teach on the old uh, Israelite wilderness journey. Now we're talking about the future one that is, I'm convinced, going to happen in our lifetime. Isn't that kind of exciting? It's and it's it's probably at least as many people, probably more. How many how many Jews were in the uh, wilderness journey back in Moses' About day? Three million, they say, or somewhere like that. Well, Maybe yeah. I've, I've heard anywhere from a million to maybe three million. Yeah. I've heard I've heard, yeah, I've heard yeah, different yeah, numbers. Let's just write around the same. Well, it wasn't all yeah. Jews though. There no, were, yeah, yeah. There were the others. There were different countries. Right. Yeah. That that probably will be true of this wilderness journey too. This wilderness experience. I'm I'm thinking. You know, well, it won't just be Jews. It'll be any Christians in Judea too, probably. I mean, who knows, right? Um, I told you guys where to find me if I happen to be there, right? Didn't I show you a picture of the Marriott Hotel? Yeah. You'll be in the middle. It's of a, it's a resort <laughs> town. So, so this is this is what our verse says. It says then, the, and this is future. Then the, this is right after a, a very key event in human history. Cheryl, what's it called? The abomination of, of desolation. Of desolation, exactly. This is right after this. It says. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they, whoever they is, we're going to talk about that, should feed her there 1,260 days, which is how long? Three and a half. Three, Three and a half years. years. It's the last half of the seven-year Great Tribulation. Mm -hmm. And um, they have specific instructions to do so. It's, it's been in writing for the last 2,000 years, even though I don't know of any Jew who would uh, take it to heart now or even read the words because it's from Jesus himself. We read that. Uh, uh, last week, I think it was, maybe the week before, in Matthew 24, when Jesus talks about the abomination of desolation, he says, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, standing in the holy place spoken of by Daniel the prophet, and then he immediately goes into, let those are, who are in Judea flee, get out of Dodge, exactly. run for the hills, don't go back in your house to get your clothes, don't go back to your house in the field, just just leave as fast as you can, that's how urgent it is, right? So, um, so I want to, so let's talk about the actual journey, because again, I just, it's it's too much fun not to actually like bring this to life, okay? So we started we started to look at pictures and stuff already, and um, we're going to do some more tonight. So. Okay, so the journey. How how do we get from Jerusalem to to Petra? If Petra really is the place, and the cat should be out of the bag by now. I, I think it is. I, I heard it for years from different teachers and and uh, you know, scholars that, that the wilderness that the Jews flee to during this time is, is Petra. And I always thought that that's goofy. It just, you know, it's like a neat place. But, but biblically, it is 100% accurate, which we're gonna get to as we progress here. But how do we get from Jerusalem to, to Petra? And what's the town by Petra? Do you guys remember what it's called? We just saw a picture of it. It's right there. What Wadi Musa. Wadi means, it basically means wash. Yeah, Wadi is a wash. It's like a deep Washington canyon. Moses. What's that? Yeah, and Musa means Moses. And do you guys remember why Wadi Musa is called Wadi Musa? Do you remember why? Because there's water there. That's where Moses brought him to strike the water. Yeah, because uh, tradition says that that's the place where Moses struck the rock. Yeah. Who knows that? Struck the rock with his staff, and the water came, and 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 it made God mad because God didn't tell him to hit the rock; He told him to speak to it. But Moses struck it out of anger because he was so frustrated with the with the people. And then because of that sin, God said, "You're not going to enter the promised land now." So that one act cost him entering the promised land, which which somehow is just like that. I mean, somehow that preaches. I haven't figured it out yet, but there's some connection there. Yeah, it's. I mean, now they have to leave the promised land for three and a half years. I don't know. There's something there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up with a cool way to phrase this in part four of my book series. <laughs> okay. So, um, but yeah, that's Wadi Musa. Uh, so, assuming that is the place, how do we get from Jerusalem there? And again, we, we, we've estimated uh, anywhere from one million to three million Jews on the, the wilderness journey, you know, several thousand years ago with, with Moses. 
Um, how many have we estimated in here to be on this wilderness journey? Five. Well, you remember there's, there's about six and a half million Jews in Israel. Mm -hmm. The instructions that Jesus gave are not to all of Israel, but it's specifically yeah, in Judea, around. the area around Jerusalem. Yep. Um, we have reason to believe, based on other parts of the end time story, that the Jews in northern area somehow are safe during this time. Okay, <coughs> probably, probably keeping themselves safe. I mean, the, have you ever seen the IDF? They're pretty tough. Um, but but I don't I don't get the impression. Doesn't mean it's not the case that every Jew in Israel is going to flee Israel. But certainly the no, ones in and around Jerusalem. Um, today there's about 850,000 Jews in Jerusalem proper, which means probably about one and a half million, two million Jews uh, in the Jerusalem greater, greater Jerusalem. area. Okay, so. That's who's going to be on this wilderness journey. It's, it's almost the exact same number of Jews who were on the original wilderness journey. That's interesting, right? Kind of compelling. Go ahead, Elijah. How many Christians in the same area? Uh, good question. I'll have to look it up. Not nearly as many. I think there's about 100,000 Christians in that area. Yeah. Okay. But again, any Christians who were there at that time, uh, I think the instructions are meant for them too. They need to leave town too. Jesus didn't say, hey, if you're Jewish, you need to leave. Um, we read, we'll read further in Revelation chapter 12 that it's Jews and Christians both who the Antichrist targets for extermination. Okay? Oh, yeah. He goes after both groups. So, And then who knows who else? But we know that the Muslims are going to uh, reign supreme over Jerusalem during the, the last half of the seven year Great Tribulation when the Antichrist is pretending to be their Mahdi. Because he's not really, he's just playing, you know, paying a lip service to get them to fall. But this is how they go. So they get in their cars, they get in buses or whatever, and they go from Jerusalem through Ma'ali Adumim. I've been on this whole highway, everything, not all the way down. Um, uh, Noam and I took this to go to the Dead Sea last time I was there, you know, et cetera. But, uh, and that's a huge um, illegal Israeli settlement up there, Ma'ali Adumim, uh, just to the east of Jerusalem, right outside the, the, the city. Um, and that's one of the, settlements that Netanyahu is insisting this is going to be part of Israel when it, whatever yeah. deal we do and this is actually written into the uh, the treaty that, that President Trump and Jared Kushner are, are working on that they're going to keep that right so uh, you know it, it's a huge highway it's it's a you know really wide very modern highway uh, goes down through the mountains down to the uh, the Jordan River Valley uh, the Dead Sea goes right along there goes all the way down to to Elat Okay, Elot. Anyone want to guess what that body of water is right there? What's, what's that? What's the big one up there? Isn't it the Red Sea? Very good. That's the Mediterranean up there, of course. And then down here, Gold Star for Sharon. That's the Red Sea. Great scuba diving there. I want to try it maybe on my next trip. Um, but that is the only crossing, the only road that you can take from Israel into Jordan. So they would have to be in their cars and buses and go all the way down to to, to Elot to cross, and even today it takes hours to do that crossing. It's not, you don't just like, you know, go across a bridge and you're there, right? Go across the Jordan River. It's, it's you know, checkpoints and all that. Now, is, is this how the Jews are going to get? Okay, then they cross over and then they go up Highway 47 to Wadi Musa where they set up their camp for the next three and a half years. But is, is that how the Jews are going to get from Jerusalem to Wadi Musa? Helicopters? That'd be a lot of helicopters. They're going to walk. They're going to walk. Okay. Everyone who says walk gets a gold star, and Tom gets three because he actually did that with his fingers. He did an illustrated sermon. Yes. Yes. But why? But come on, you guys. Come on. Talk about dramatizing things. Why? Why do they have to walk? Why can't they take the cars? Because they're making a Because they're wanted at that point. They're wanted at that point. Because of this. Okay. So. So we so we know uh, we know Matthew's version of of the Olivet discourse. This is Luke's version of the Olivet discourse. This verse precisely corresponds with Matthew chapter twenty four verse fifteen, which I'll say it again. Jesus talking. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, the temple, let him who read understand. This verse precisely corresponds with that. This is Luke's version. This is this is what what he recalls. Jesus saying so, and I'm sure it's a combination of both those things, of course. It says that somewhere else. This is, this is what Luke says. He says, but when you see what? Jerusalem surrounded by armies, no, then know that its desolation is near. So Luke gives us this, this unique picture. If we didn't have Luke, we wouldn't have this because Mark doesn't mention this. 
Matthew doesn't mention this, but we get this, oh, I love this verse, because it just gives us this, this glimpse of the future that, that we would just be guessing otherwise. No, Jerusalem at that time, by the time the Antichrist does his thing, before he even commits the abomination of desolation. Yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. He's pointing at the clock. So, <laughs> Before he even commits the abomination of desolation, you, you could be standing in Jerusalem. The temple's under construction. We're, we're a few days away. We're a week away from the day of dedication. Uh, whatever Jews are still going along with this story, this roots, are all excited. Yay, we're going to dedicate the temple. We're going to... Uh, place the Ark of the Covenant back in the Holy of Holies, the Shekinah, what we call the Shekinah glory, that's that they consider like an impersonal force of God. We know it as the Holy Spirit. He's going to return to the inner sanctuary, the Holy of Holies, and and, and then we're going to have our, our temple again, right? But, but you're going to be standing there in Jerusalem looking around. When I say you, I mean me and all of you, because you guys are all going to be there with me, right? Yes? Sounds good. More enthusiasm? No, you don't have to. <laughs> right? um, Elijah and Andrew are already recruited for that. So, John, you come too. Mark, of course. Um, Tom, you want to? Okay. Cool. Uh, you'll, you'll be I'm looking around at the Ernie. hills. Huh? I'm not going without Ernie. Oh, I, think, I can't go without him. He's, he's the guy that fixes everything. You'll look up at, you'll look up at Mount Scopus to the north, and you'll look at the Mount of Olives to the, to the east, and you'll look, you'll look down into um, uh, Silwan and the, and the Kidron Valley, and you'll see armies all around and what armies do you think what mm -hmm. armies <coughs> you think it's the idf it's not the idf no, no, no somehow the antichrist has 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 worked this and and he and knows what he's doing of course it's it's it's, it's armies of muslim nations i don't have a theory yet who like specifically <coughs> what nations but it's armies of muslim nations who are going to be backing him up they got to be shia they got to be shiite so I'm thinking Lebanese, maybe Syrian, Iranian, okay, Hamas, Hezbollah, and, and there's going to be armies surrounding Jerusalem in place ready for when he makes his move because then all hell is going to break loose. All hell is going to break loose. He's going to unleash uh, Satan's supreme wrath on, on the people of God, that's Christians and Jews. And, and, and so that's, that's the view here. So... Am I going to just get in the car and, and drive through this? That's where the road is. That's where the, the road, where, where the road go. That's where the road is. Oh, and here, the very next verse is this, just, so you, just to give you context here. Right, then let those who are in Judea leave the mountain. So we know the rest of it, because this is where it lines up perfectly with uh, Matthew chapter 24, just to, uh, to uh, confirm that context. But, but So we're going to just get into our cars and go, look where the road is. It's, it's, it's exactly where the armies are going to be. The Antichrist, when he makes his move, he'll make sure uh, everything's in position. He'll be controlling all the roads. All the, he'll be controlling the airport, the ports of entry, wherever he can. Apparently, he won't be up in the north. All right, we talked about this before because the, the um, you know, Katim, they come into Haifa Bay. The, the war of Armageddon is staged up in um, the Jezreel Valley, right? The plains of Megiddo, that's up in the north. But, but down in this area here, that's all, that's all above the TV screen there, okay? In this whole area here, he's in control. I don't know how far south, but at least around Jerusalem. So how do the Jews get out of Dodge? How do they get out of Dodge? Um, all that's going to walk all the way to, to, the, to that place. I've got, I've, yeah, exactly, and I've got pictures and I've got videos, personal videos that I took yeah, when I was over there. Say, a few minutes worth. I, yeah, I'm going to show you some videos, and they're, they're funny, they're fun videos, very informative, okay, yes. and I'm not talking about me talking, it's, it's our guide who was driving us through the Judean desert, yeah. talking to us about what's there and how it connects to Jerusalem. You'll see it next time we come together in two weeks, right? Uh, fascinating stuff. I forgot about this, but I'm putting all this together for tonight, and I realized, wow, this guy's talking about what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. you'll, you'll see it. Uh, but just to give you just a sneak preview, and then I'm going to close for tonight. Um, but yeah, please come back in two weeks. Yeah. Gonna be fun stuff. Pictures, videos, personal stuff. And again, what am I doing? We're making it real. We're yes. bringing, we're bringing the future wilderness journey, the future wilderness experience to life, to life. Like this is it. This is where they go. This is how they go, right? But all this is um, we're gonna now. close with this tonight. All this is happening now. It's all pop was prophesized that would happen. Now this is that's the right. beginning of what's gonna take place. Yeah. And what's going to happen, and that's what you're hearing. And the news is going to broadcast whatever. 
Yep. And they know that already about the news. Yep, and Cheryl, you, you were chosen from the foundations of the universe <laughs> to be in this generation. God chose you yeah. to be part of the end time story. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. You were, exciting. You were destined to be a watchman in this generation. Yeah. So give Cheryl a hand. That's that one of those okay. Okay. So, so, yeah, because I told you guys last week, I tried to remember to bring a picture. So remember I told you that the Judean desert makes Lake Havasu and the surrounding look like a jungle paradise? Because it's so desolate there that this tree is on a map. So you look at any yeah. topographical yeah. map. Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. You look at any topographical map of the Judean desert, <laughs> and there's that tree because trees are so rare. And why would you need it? Why would you need to know where a tree is? Water. So you get some Water shade. and you get and shade. Say it again. Yeah. You get shade. Yeah, gold star, shade. gold star. You get shade. You dig down real deep. Maybe you find water because you're dead out there. I mean, most yep. most of the yep. year, you get caught out there, your car breaks down, your Jeep breaks down. What you're, if you're somebody toast. cuts down the three yeah. trees? <laughs> well, and does anyone remember, so this is, um, this is everyone recognize this good looking yeah. guy here? The <laughs> That's where we're at. Uh, this not quite as good looking, but still, you know, relatively <laughs> handsome guy here. This, this is Ayal, this is our uh, Jewish um, driver. He was our guide, we were in his Jeep. And this is Musa who is a Palestinian Arab, you see how much the Israelis and Palestinians don't get along? I mean, come yeah. on, on a personal level, oh God, just a great guy. And uh, we're drinking Turkish coffee under an acacia tree. Turkish coffee? Yeah. Yes. Why would you drink coffee out in the heat? And that's, that's a misstatement, you don't actually drink it, you, you eat it, you've got to chew yeah, on this coffee. Yeah, they have syrup. Because oh. it's coffee. That acacia tree, what's so cool about acacia tree, and I'm done, and I'm done. I like to bet they're laughing some way over time. What's so cool about an acacia tree? Isn't it what the Ark is made of? Yes, Gold Star. It's what the Ark of the Covenant is made out of. It's an acacia tree. So Again, it's one of the few woods that is it doesn't decompose, doesn't break down. So everything about this picture is just unbelievably cool. There's our vehicle right there. The only bad thing is Noam's not in it because he's the one taking the picture. You'll see Noam in two weeks. I got a couple pictures and videos. Anyways. Uh, we will end there. I told you guys a lot of content. We are having fun. By the way, on a little silly and we're closing note, there. Yes, yes, ma'am. You know that we lock down at the end where the Red Sea is. Mm -hmm. uh, our friend that's from Israel, he says it reminds me of Habasu. Oh, says. Yes. Oh yeah, no, he says, says the water's blue. Adi said it too. You got yeah. the little roll up and the city yeah. all up the hill and all. No, and Adi both say that Habasu is more like home than anywhere they've ever been. Yeah. We're in the same latitude as Jerusalem, yeah. so yeah. yeah. There's a connection, there's a connection, right? It's just, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so like I say, uh, next week is the ice cream thing, come back in two yep. weeks, we'll pick up again, we're gonna see where the juice, do you see us sitting there drinking coffee? That literally could be, probably is, do you hear that? The route that the Jews take to get to the wilderness. Wow, not cool, so yeah. There's my conversation. Okay, closing in prayer. <laughs> All right, here we go. Father God, we just thank you for tonight, Lord. We just thank you that your word is exciting and it's alive and it's real and that we are the generation that will see these things come to pass, that, that you've chosen us from the foundations of the universe. Just like I said about Cheryl a minute ago, all of us, you've destined us to be watchmen in this generation. I thank you, Father God, for an increased anointing over each one here to understand these things. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're not hiding these things from us, but each time we get together, taught together, study on our own, uh, read, read uh, the word on our own that, that you're revealing uh, more and more mysteries to us and we're just excited about the times that are coming because we say just as Jesus said we pray Father God your kingdom come your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven in Jesus name and just bless each one as they go tonight Lord in Jesus name we pray Amen, Amen. Amen. Okay thank you so thank you Very good. Uh, I, live. I hope we have at least one watcher and come back in two weeks Two weeks